Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, we are going to use a different method to create a pavilion. So I want to go to Tools, Options. I want to check the units. It's on meters, three decimal places. That's good. Uh, and I want to create one arc here, and then I want to extrude it to have the 3D surface. So I want to go here. Maybe go with this option, Start, End, and Point. Going from here, if I go 10 meters up and 10 meters to the left, this seems good, and I want to stop it here. And then I want to extrude this curve by maybe about like 18 meters. I want to type 18, and this seems about right. Now, if I change this to shaded, you see that this is actually a surface. So this is the surface of the pavilion. I want to uh, open Grasshopper, so let's type Grasshopper. So first I need to actually uh, define that surface in Grasshopper as well. Uh, so I want to go with like a B-Rep. I want to select one B-Rep, which is this one. And now I can actually hide this. So next thing I want to do is that I want to define a kind of a shape in Rhino and I want to use it to create some patterns on the surface. So how about I go to this view, uh, I'm going to use a polyline, so I want to type PL, maybe going from uh, here to here, over there, over there, and here. So this is my shape, it's very simple, and I want to use this shape to create some pattern on this surface. So now that I have a shape in Rhino, I need to bring it to Grasshopper, so I need a curve. I need to set one curve, select that one, and I want to internalize this data. And now there is some option in Grasshopper which is very interesting, and it says uh, Populate. For now, I'm going to work with 2D Populate, which is this one. So basically, when we talk about Populate, as soon as I bring it, it's going to create 100 random points on one horizontal surface. So let's go over the inputs. So you see that it uses one rectangle, one region, uh, which is that rectangle. By default, that is set to 20 by 10. Uh, it considers 100 points. And then it has kind of a seed, which is kind of how uh, the randomize happens. So we can work with these uh, inputs. For instance, I can draw a rectangle here. I want to start maybe from that corner. I want to go with this dimension that we have here. So I want to type like R18 by 10. Actually, I want to move it on this side. So I'm going to go with move, move that here. This seems good. Uh, I want to bring one other curve and I want to actually set one curve, grab the rectangle. Uh, the rectangle is now here. I can internalize the data and I can get rid of this. And as soon as I assign this to my rectangle, the populated points are going to be in this area. I can also assign a number. Let's say it's 100. How about I go with like 200? or maybe 150. So we can also control the number. Uh, we can also assign a, a value to seed. So for instance, let's say if I bring 10, if I assign this to the seed, in every of these phases, it's going to create a different random pattern, right? Uh, so what's the output here? So far, we just have a set of populated data. If I bring a panel, you see that basically what we have is a set of points. They all have a height of zero, uh, but different values for X and Y. Okay, now uh, I want to move this shape to those points, right? So I want to use move. What do I want to move? I want to move that shape that we created. That goes to G. How do I want to move it? I want to move it along these points. So I want to assign the list of points uh, to my motion here. 
uh, the reason they are all over there is that uh, the original curve that we had this one is on that corner if I grab it and move it to this other corner and uh, I need to actually select that again set one curve select the curve now they are all in the right place right so this seems a bit too crowded I can uh, change this 150 to like 100 it's getting a bit better I can also change the scale here so for instance if I uh, change the scale by like 0.5 it's going to be kind of smaller objects here. Uh, we have the random points, so I can group this. I can bring a scribble. This is my random point or random points. Uh, and this is the object. How about I also rotate this object each time by maybe about like 90 degrees. Uh, I can get rid of that shape. Uh, I want to internalize this data again and I can get rid of that shape. Uh, so I want to rotate these items. I want to type rotate here. Uh, what we want to rotate is the object. So G goes to G. But you see they are now all rotated around one single point which is 0, 0, 0. However, we don't want them to rotate around one point, but we want each of them to rotate around its center. So the list of the points that we had here to populate the 2D points, that also goes to my point here. So now each of them is rotated on itself, right? Uh, and uh, the only things that I want to change in this case is the amount of rotation. If I turn this off for a second, you see that uh, the objects are rotated, right? How much they are rotated? If I hover the mouse around here, you see that it's rotated by half a pi. So one pi uh, is actually 180 degrees. Uh, if it says half a pi, it means that it's rotated by 90 degrees. So the value here is actually based on how many pi's you have. Now I want to create a series. Uh, I'm going to type series. What I want to do is that I want to go with half a pi, one pi, and one and a half pi, which means it's going to move it, uh, move the shapes by 90 degrees each time, right? So uh, in this case, how many shapes do I have? That number comes from the count here. So that count that I have also goes to my number here. If I bring a panel we can see how it's going here. So for now it goes from 0 to 100 because we assigned 100 to the number. Uh, the step is 1. I want the step to be half so each time is gonna be like half of a pi. So the step goes here uh, and then it starts from 0 which is okay. For the degree here, it says 0.5 times pi. So that means I need to multiply my values by pi. I want to type pi, bring a pi, assign it to a. Uh, if I assign this to this, you see that the values are uh, multiplied by pi. If I assign this to my rotation, now you see each time each of these objects is rotated by half a pi, which is 90 degrees. If I assign 0.25, which is one fourth of 180 degrees, each time each of them is going to move by 45 degrees. I'm going to actually leave it on 0.5. I kind of like the sharp edges that it creates. This seems all good to me. I want to group this, create a group. Uh, I want to bring one scribble. This is my pattern on a horizontal surface. Okay, next thing I want to do now that I have the points and the pattern, I want to actually uh, project the pattern on the 
on the surface of the BREP over there. So I want to go with project, just like what we did in the last videos. Uh, it's going to be this item. Uh, curve to project, these are the curves that goes to C. Uh, the BREP is the one that we brought from Rhino and I guess we internalized it already. Yeah, that is uh, grayed out, that means we did. I want to assign this to that. And now you see that uh, the objects are actually projected over the surface. Now there are a couple of things I want to do. I want to select this surface move it by maybe one meter in that direction. Uh, actually, I need to go here, select the BREP, select uh, one BREP, select this again. Okay, now it's working better. How about I change the view to wireframe? Now we see better. I can also get rid of this arc. I can move it a little bit to the front. I'm going to go with 0.5 on this direction. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to have kind of these curves to start from a reasonable uh, height here. This seems good to me. Also, in order to avoid these kind of edges here, I want to use a scale 1D uh, to actually scale this by one meter on each side. So going from there, now you see those objects are complete. I want to use a scale 1D, scale it by 1 meter on this side, and I want to also use it on that other side. Now you see that the objects are mainly uh, inside the surface. This seems good. Uh, I want to make sure that this object is internalized, and then I can actually delete that. So this seems about right. Next thing I want to do is that I want to split those elements from the surface. So I want to go with split surface, this option. The curves go here, BREP goes to surface. Uh, I can hide the BREP here. And this is actually uh, the final result. You see we have a dashed line here. Uh, if I bring a panel, that means we have a number of lists inside the list. The best way to address this issue is to flatten this list, so it's only one list, and then it's going to not create repetitive objects in your Rhino model. So this seems good. Uh, how about I group these three items? I want to bring a scribble. And this is my actual pavilion surface. Uh, when you are done, you can right click on the last item and we can bake it. That means it's going to export it into Rhino. Uh, default for now, OK. I'm going to save this file uh, and I want to close it. Uh, we can change to shaded here. This is what we have here, finally. I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, I want to move this surface to my new layer. And now you see that uh, the objects which are on the default layer are actually the openings or the transparent area, and the rest is the actual surface. Uh, I want to grab this surface. I want to offset that surface by maybe about 0.2. Uh, if the direction is not correct, you can flip it here. And now the direction is good. I want to type 0.2, enter, and there we go. So now you see uh, I actually extruded uh, the, the opaque part, but I left the rest as it is. Uh, you can assign two different materials to, to your two layers. For the default layer, or we can rename it as the transparent part, uh, you can assign just a clear glass. Uh, and you can assign uh, any material you want to uh, the other one. If I go to rendered, uh, now you see the object here. I can go to render tools, uh, turn the sun on. 
and we need to also have kind of a ground here so I want to go to my uh, properties to render to ground plane and I want to assign some kind of material maybe it could be grass under organic we have grass If you want to adjust the shadows to the best option, we can go to Sun Settings, we can go to Sun, double click here actually, and uh, first we can check the location, I want to click on here, so it's going to consider uh, here Toronto, and uh, maybe this is going to look better in a summer day because this is a pavilion for a summer day to play like music in the park or something uh, so I want to put it on like June or July around here maybe 21st of July because that's, that day is going to give us the sharpest kind of shadows and I can move this to different times of the day to see uh, which view gives me the best shadow so something like this is good maybe for my renders so I'm going to leave the sun settings on this. You can just assign uh, materials, uh, you can assign a picture to the background and you can uh, render this.